that race and religion should not be mixed. Every time हम नस्ल को और मस्जिद को दोनों को गदमट कर देते, इस वजह से इस तरह के problems आते। Next, I will move on to my topic. That is about Genesis of Article 371D and annexation of Hyderabad to integration of Telangana. So never read a history to have a pride or regret over it. You read a history to know the past, to understand the present, and have plan for the future. Never read a history to regret or tarikh kabhi mat padhiya rush karne ke liye, but na tarikh ke galiyon mein bhoot terenge. Annexing, what made me to write on this? That's important thing. So Article 371D is about the special privileges. So very about two months ago, one special privileges were taken away from the state. That is Article 370. So the way it has happened, and the Article 371D is also connected with that. So what was happening about two months ago in the valley in the north made me to research about this Article 371D, which speaks about the special privileges of this land the special privileges that were given to the people of Telangana. So this is the reason for which I have written this paper. So next, the title of the paper is about Annexation of Hyderabad and Integration of Telangana. So now, how, why did it change? There was an annexation of Hyderabad, but we don't say that integration of Hyderabad. We say integration of Telangana. So this is all the history that we need. This shows the importance of the issue the clear nature of this territorial or geographical land. So now we will move on, the whole paper is divided into integration and annexation. There are two different things that are being discussed in the paper. The first is about integration or annexation. So why, why, use, why I use the word annexation is that after 15th August 1947, there was end of Paramount AC. In the Independence of India Act 1947 divided the whole British India into two regions, that was India and Pakistan and there were about 526 princely states. So these princely states, there was no paramountancy over these two regions. And then, these princely states were given free choice to have their own method of, uh, own, uh, have their own relationship with the Pakistan and India. So there was no any legal agreement. So that, and after that, this landlock, that is Hyderabad state, was the biggest state so there was no legal instruments so how to determine the relationship. There was one agreement that was Stansley Agreement that was for about one year. So that's all. Then after that, police action happens and then the Nizam delegates goes to the UN Security Council for petitioning before the UN Security Council. So the UN Security Council's delegation of Nizam is not relevant to us, but the delegation of Indian, what the Indian government delegate has said is the most important thing. His government share the deepest regret for the use of the force by any country on any occasion. And then after that, what the government says, he emphasizes that his government, that is Indian government, has repeatedly said that the will of the people will determine the relationship of the Hyderabad with the dominion of India and form the government. So the paper, the paper carries the will of the people. So how long, to what extent, and how much, how much time it took for the people's will to reflect in the constitution. Obviously, in the 2nd June 1940, in 2014, that the people's will was recognized and the Telangana was given. So, almost about 60, 72 years, or I should say 70 years, it took 70 years to enter the people's will. Why I am saying the people's will? Because the Nizam did not send his representative to the Constant Assembly. When the Constant Assembly was forming a supreme law of the land, this person has not sent his representative. The logic is something else, we will not discuss that. So now, the concerns of these people were not reflected in the constitution when the making of the constitution happened. So, there was a need for the amendment in the constitution, that's why Article 371D was enacted. Because it was the people's will. So, I am trying to say that the people's will that was discussed in UN Security Council, then it goes to the parliament, and then it goes to the Legislature. The, the whole paper carries the people's will. The, there are few, the, mostly the paper is about legal, legalities with historical narration over that. So first legality was that about end of Paramandesi and obviously the political maneuver worked there and the matter was closed. So now what happened? There was a military rule for about two years. Okay. Then after that, there was a 
ICS officer who was appointed as the chief administrator. So again, there was a blunt violation of constitution law, wherein if you are going to appoint any person as a chief minister or a prime minister, you need to, uh, if he is not a people's representative, then he must be uh, elected by the, by, he must be elected to the parliament or to the state legislature. So Manmohan Singh was elected not through the people's, uh, by casting the vote, he was appointed from, by the Rajya Sabha people through Assam. In the same way, when Bellodi was chief minister of, for, of, and, of Hyderabad, this constitutional provision was violated. He was here for about two and a half years. Before that, there was a military rule, obviously, J.N. Chaudhary. I am not discussing about those of Polo, so-and-so. And then after that, we will move to one more thing, the important jurisdiction. Wherein, in Janardhan Reddy, there is a case law, very specific, that, that, that explain you how the Supreme Court has saw the Hyderabad state. That there, there was a judgment passed in 1949 by the High Court of Hyderabad. And Janardhan was punished so-and-so. These people have petitioned before the Supreme Court by saying that to review the petition, what has been said by Hyderabad High Court. So Supreme Court of India has said that the word used in the, in the so-and-so article, that is Article 136, is of territory of India. So as per our interpretation, the territory of India is not, the Hyderabad state is, is not a part of territory of India. Because for us, the territory of India is only after 2019, 19, uh, 26 January 1950. Because, and the case has been, the, the judgment has been passed by the lower court in the year to 1949. But this was the opinion of the, uh, the uh, judgment of uh, uh, High Court, uh, Supreme Court. But whereas, the Indian delegate was arguing in a different manner in 1949. Wherein, I need to mention the words of that delegate. What it says, have it. India could not possibly agree to dismember any allowing, by allowing any of its Indian state to claim the international statehood. Hyderabad had never been a state in a sense of international law and could not never be one in future. So now, this very in the Supreme Court says that the territory of India for the territory of India, the Hyderabad is not a part of state. But whereas in international forum, they were recognizing. So ultimately, uh, there was a declaration or farman, a royal enactment by the Nizam in the year 1949 in December by saying that the, the Hyderabad will be accepted in the constitution of India, so and so. So this is about the annexation, the legalities of that. So now we are discussing about the integration, Article 371D, the people's will. The people's will is represented in the Article 371D. So there was a uh, Mulki rule. Mulki rule is the most important thing because Hyderabad has its own penal laws, has its own civil services. There was one criteria in Hyderabad police services that is 15% uh, the, to acquire a uh, public service or a public employment in the government sector. You need to be a Mulki. Mulki means the one who is born to a Mulki or who has been here for about 15 years and has abandoned the idea to leave this land. So that is the criteria, that is 15 years. So the moment Hyderabad was merged, or I, I should say it trifurcated, the Maratha region gone to Maharashtra, and the Hyderabad, the Karnataka gone to Karnataka, and the Telangana went to Andhra Pradesh. So all these things happening when the people's will be, was not recognized, because the Velodi was here to administer another center's advice. The people's will was not considered when there was a unification of Telangana and Hyderabad. Again, at that time, there was one agreement that is known as Gentleman's Agreement. That is important. Again, I should mention it. It was the Hyderabad Congress and the Andhra Congress, they have agreed to on the common points, wherein they said that pertaining to the employment, the existing laws will be prevailing. The existing law means the Mulki rule will be. And again, there was 14 clause of Gentleman's Agreement which says that 60 is to 40. That is, 60% will be the Andhra people and 40% will be the Langana people representing the cabinet. At the same time, in the 40%, one cabinet minister should be of Muslim from Telangana region. But the government said, the, when the Telangana people said that enforce this agreement, the government said that this was an agreement signed by the between the two different political parties. They, they, are, uh, they, they won't represent the sovereign. Because there cannot be an agreement with the sovereign. Sovereign and service cannot have an agreement. Okay? You cannot have a, 
in that way they have violated that that, that, that Arctic uh, gentleman's agreement was never implemented. Whereas uh, Rajiv Gandhi has uh, had an agreement with the uh, Assam government pressure, wherein the NRC whole NRC process is being is being happening on the basis of that agreement. The government is upholding that agreement, but the government has ransacked and never implemented this gentleman's agreement. So now the, gen the gentleman agreement has gone. So, so there are so many non-monkeys that have come to Hyderabad and have. Uh, started getting the employment so and so, so, and so. there was a change of language because the, that the, the you was not a medium of instruction or medium of education for the people and then in 1949 itself they have implemented the Telugu as a medium so now many Andhra people having lost Madras they ran to Hyderabad for the public employment so people were saying that see implement the Mulgi rules why are not implementing the Mulgi rules so at that time there was one slogan that is important that speaks about Italy summer go back. Today what we what we eat is the Italy summer. At that time in 1951, in around 1951, people shouted for Italy summer go back because the Italy summer was eaten by people of Madras and Andhra. I'm not going. I'm not saying about the. I'm I'm explaining about the regional differences. So and after that, these all things happen. The paper is of all that. Then we will jump directly to the. Gentleman's Agreement, Mulgiru and Article 371D. Article 371D has not entered into the constitution. It has been in 1973. We will jump directly to the 1973. What happened? The Supreme Court of India says that no, no, Mulgiru are not implemented because that there cannot be a discrimination between the state and state, within the state, because a Punjab government can ask, can give employment only to Punjabi people, or Marathwana people can give employment to the Marathi or Maharashtrians. Whereas in Telangana people, these Telangana people are demanding to have an employment within the region. Whole Andhra Pradesh is a one state and we cannot give a specific provision to the within the state. So it happens like this, the Mulki rule was not implemented. At that time, to change or to revoke that uh, judgment, so and so, the Supreme Court has upheld the Mulki rule. But after that, Article 371D was implemented under Article under the Amendment 32. And finally, there was one geo that is 610. Again, that was never implemented. There was a criteria of four years should be given for the public employment. And then when that was not implemented, here the Telangana agitation starts. So selling Telangana agitation is a very non-communal agitation dealing with the bread and butter of the people. Had it been, if Muslims have been a 35% or 30% of Telangana, the thing would have been different. Thank you.